Welcome back to Central Valley Business. I'm your host, Chuck Leonard, sitting in for Mike Scott. My next guest, let's bring in our good buddy, John Rooker from Nettle Coleman. How's What's it going? going? On, buddy? How are you? Doing First excellent. of all, time out. Killer tie. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. It looks, it looks very nice. It's, I like this tie. It's one of my favorites. I never get my tie straight. I've always come on here. Every time I go back, I look at the video, and my tie is like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm paying extra attention to that today. Very, just very nice. Uh, tell people at home exactly what it is that you do. I help people. That's what I do. Criminal defense is about helping good people through tough times, and that's what I do. But just because people have a criminal charge doesn't mean they're actually a criminal at, at, inside. It, it just, things happen to people. Things happen, and honestly... I mean, if you have any faith in the police force to arrest people at probable cause and the jury to do their job properly and acquit if it's less than beyond a reasonable doubt, then you have to find there's a lot of room in there for acquittals. Otherwise, you're not giving our police enough credit for doing their job. You're just saying that they let people do crime. That, that's an interesting way to look at it, John. It's the you're, legal you're way. You're twisting it around and putting it back on the police officer. No, I'm actually giving them a lot of credit. If they do their job right and the jury does their job right, there are a lot of people that rightfully should be arrested and should be acquitted of a crime. There's it's two different standards. They have two different jobs. Hmm. Why is it that you wanted to be a, a, a criminal defense lawyer? I mean, there's all kinds of different lawyers you could have been. There's a lot of reasons for a criminal defense lawyer. One is I do like helping people, and people that come to a criminal defense attorney are people that need help, and that's what I do. How long have you been doing it? Oh, I'm in my fourth year, I think, practicing. I interned at Public Defender for a year or two before that, and then law school during that so, time. Okay, so you, you, you interned as in the Public Defender's Office. Loved it. Loved did the you, Public Defender's Office. Did, did you really like it? Because I, I get the feeling... I don't know that I've been there a lot, but I get the feeling that these uh, these uh, the, the public defenders don't want to make the the district attorney mad, and so they kind of let them get pushed around a little bit. Oh, quite the opposite. The public defenders I actually went and taught an MCLE at the public defender's office. I think it was last Friday on drunk driving, and this is a group that fights so hard. One came to my office last night, actually, around closing time, for help on three different cases. They care. They fight hard. They do everything they can. They just have a caseload of several hundred cases. It's the best job in seven minutes or less that you could ever ask a human being to do. But most of the time they get to spend with the case is only a few minutes on average. And that's the limitation. When, you, when, you, when, you go, when you're the public defender guy and you go in and you, and you crush them, you, 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 get, you, you get it turned around, the, the district attorney's got to look at you and go, gosh, we don't want to... We don't want to play with him anymore. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes Do they try to recruit you over their side. I don't know if they'd go go that far with it, <laughs> but I'm friends with a lot of the DAs, and that's I don't think it's a conflict. You fight harder against your friends, like playing chess. You try to beat your friend, you don't want your friend to beat you, and they feel the same way. Being friends with somebody doesn't mean that you compromise your job in any way. You can fight it out on the record and walk out and. Walk off. No big. You, you specialize in the drunk driving defenses. I love the drunk driving defenses. I all the way up through homicides, but the drunk driving defenses are my favorite, without a doubt. I've gone through an amazing amount of education. I'm almost done with that master's degree that's been a thorn in my side on my weekends forever. I refer to it as homework hell Sundays because I'm always studying, mm -hmm. and it's it's painful. But it's gonna be nice to be done with that toxicology degree. I've been testifying as an expert witness as well for other attorneys at the DMV. And I enjoy that. I enjoy that a lot. It's, it's a different aspect of law that I get to be a part of. Uh, it, if someone is unfortunate enough to be pulled over after they've been drinking and they get a, charged with the DUI, they have, they have a limited amount of time to get a hold of you, right? Definitely get a hold of your attorney as soon as possible. Some evidence just goes away too fast. What do you mean goes away? Uh, there's different types of DUI. There's drug DUI. There's alcohol DUI. There's times where you can retest the blood. You could even go have your own your blood drawn the next morning if you don't trust the government results, which many people have stood right there in my office and said, that's not true. My blood was not that high. And you look at different explanations that can be hard to prove a month later, two months later, like fermentation. Blood can ferment right there in the vial. If you get the yeast, you get the temperature, you get the time, and you get sugar, which blood has sugar in it, assuming the person was alive when they took it, and then you can get fermentation right there in the blood that wasn't there when they drew it. New alcohol, just like making wine. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is, uh, drunk driving can, can ruin someone's life. 
Oh, without a doubt, especially uh, commercial drivers, people that have jobs where they can't uh, have a drunk driving, insurance goes up. Your wife will kill you. Your wife will kill you. That's, <laughs> yeah. And that's domestic violence. That's a whole yeah. other issue. Right. <laughs> uh, there's another case for you. And I've seen, mid, I've seen grown human beings, adults in my office, breaking down over exactly this charge. I've seen senior citizens have lived 70, 80 years, never been in any trouble going, my God, they're accusing me of being a criminal. And it ruins their morale. It really does. It psychologically beats them, beats them down. And then, and then what happens is, is they get their license taken away. Uh, a lot of them still have to drive. Then they get the, they pulled over and their car gets taken. And because they have a, a suspended license, it can, it can just get messy. It can get messy. One judge did point out, a judge I truly admire, points out, it's not just driving without a license. It's the fact they got caught. Most of us don't get pulled over all that often. You must not be very good at driving if you're getting pulled over all the, all the time, mm -hmm. which some of that has to do with the vehicles that people choose to drive to. Right. If you're going to drive around in a lowered pickup with wire wheels, tinted side windows, and a loud stereo at 2 in the morning, it doesn't matter that you're sober driving for the four people that are drunk in the car. Right. You better have a driver's license. Otherwise, you're getting pulled over. You're not going to get any slack. You're begging for it. You're begging for it. They're going to pull you over. If you have a gray extra cab Chevy pickup 4x4 completely stocked driving down the road at 5 o'clock, you're almost invisible. It's like a cloaking device almost. You just blend in with the rest of the That's cars. That's what I tell Billy <laughs> about his PT Cruiser. He's got a white little PT Cruiser, oh. and it's, it, it's like it's stealth-like. <laughs> it, it, he could go right through. You wouldn't it, notice People him. don't look at it. Just right there. Gray Chevy pickups, uh, different stock vehicles that don't have anything to bring the attention that people so enjoy to it because then they get the attention they don't want mr chp and when you don't have a license you don't want mr chp's attention right he, he, he might not be nice to you he gives you nice little yellow slips of paper and they're not good that, that, that take money out of your pocket yeah it's it's the driving tax yeah. all right john if people need to get a hold of you how do they do it give me a call at 496-0123 or get on the website i've humbly named jonathanrooker.com <laughs> <laughs> Always good to see you. Take John. it easy, my friend. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back.